Well, good morning, Wednesday morning, Daily Bible Time. Dominic Steele here. Thanks for joining us, and what a ripper day yesterday. We had uh, Cultivate Day 1 and opened the day with Bible Talk from Bill Salir, then people in strand groups, then we had a meeting of ministers after that. Uh, ministers from across the inner west came to join us at Village Church and uh, be encouraged and encourage us. And then uh, Mike lit on fire last night on uh, Malachi chapter 1. And uh, it's on again today, and we'd love to see you for the evening session session of Cultivate, 6.30, Malachi chapter 2, and uh, Mike's doing a great job for us, and I hope you can be there with us uh, just to see what's going on in this whole Cultivate conference, daily Bible time now today, and uh, today we're thinking about death and what happens after death, and a question comes to Jesus in Mark 12 from the Sadducees, and the question is, then the Sadducees, verse 18, who say there's no resurrection came to him with a question. Now, I mentioned this yesterday, that there were three parties, three factions in Judaism at the time. There's the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians. And the Herodians, they basically loved King Herod and the Romans, really. They basically sold out to the Romans. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, their distinctive was um, pretty much theological. Um, The Pharisees, well, they believed the whole Bible, and they believed... um, uh, in the resurrection of the dead. Now, there were some other things that are a bit too connected to the law, all that kind of thing, too connected to, I suppose, rules, 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 and rule keeping and self righteousness and things like that. But the Sadducees, um, they're much more loosey goosey. Their distinction, though, uh, theologically, was their attitude to the resurrection. And they did not believe in the resurrection. There's a helpful uh, memory line they didn't believe in the resurrection. That is why they were sad, you see. Now, um, the other thing, their attitude to Scripture. The Sadducees, I mean, the Pharisees held the whole Old Testament as authoritative. The Sadducees only held the first five books of the Old Testament as authoritative. So um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Uh, And so if you wanted to have a theological disagreement with a Sadducee, you needed to talk to them uh, based on an argument from one of those five books. Anyway, they come to Jesus, verse 19. Teacher, Moses wrote for us. So they're anchoring their argument back in the first five books of the Old Testament. Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married and died without leaving any children. The second one married the widow, but he also died leaving no child. It was the same with the third. In fact, none of the seven left any children. Last of all, the woman died. Two, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be since seven were married to her? And um, really the presupposition is that the Sadducees are working with is if there is a resurrection, which of course they don't believe in, it clearly won't work. It it won't make sense because no bloke will want to be married to the same woman as all his brothers in the resurrection and so that's the argument how can this how can this work how can everybody happily coexist and jesus responds with two counter questions each of which is balanced with a positive statement so first counter question are you not in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of god then here comes the positive statement when the dead rise they will neither marry nor be given in marriage, they'll be like angels in heaven. Okay, question and statement. Now question two, and this really is the big one for this debate. Now, about the dead rising, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the account of the burning bush? Now just note, when Jesus quotes the scripture to have a theological debate with the Sadducees, he takes Exodus chapter three, verse six as as his text which of course is a passage from one of the first five books that is it's from part of the scriptures that the Sadducees accept as the word of God so he's doing theological debate with them on their turf he says haven't you read how God said to Moses I am the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob and here's the positive assertion he's not the God of the dead but of the living you're badly mistaken So Jesus points out the error of the Sadducees, their mistake in thinking there's no resurrection, actually comes from a misunderstanding of the scriptures. Jesus quotes a Bible text that's been incorporated into part of Jewish prayer, so it's used in daily prayers, so very well known, 
part of the rhythm of their life. And he said, you guys, you've been saying this every day, but you don't understand it. And um, William L. Lane uh, notes uh, that uh, he's the commentator on Mark. He notes that um, really, as they're saying in the prayer book every day, as God said to Moses, is that the self-designation of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Moses, uh, I've been the God of your fathers. I've been their guide, their helper, their sustainer. So, implication, I will be your saviour, your helper, your guide in any present affliction. And Jesus' answer can, says Lane, be understood as saying, he's not the protector saviour of the dead, but of the living. The God of the dead implies a blatant contradiction, especially in the Sadducean understanding of death as extinction, without hope of resurrection. And so Lane says... If God has assumed the task of protecting the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, from misfortune during the course of their life, but fails to deliver them from the supreme misfortune, which marks the definitive and absolute check on their hopes, well, his protection would be of little value. But he says it's inconceivable that God would provide for the patriarchs some partial note of deliverance and then leave the final word to death. No, no, no. He's the God of the living the patriarchs, patriarchs live. They're alive in the resurrection, just as the people speaking to Jesus today will be, just as you and I will be. There is a resurrection. We do have hope in it because God is the God of the living. Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, they are alive. They are alive in heaven with God resurrected as you have the potential to be, as I have the potential to be. What a comfort. I mean, you think forward to the Apostle Paul when he says, if it's only for this life we have hope of God, well, we're to be pitied more than all. But Christ Jesus has risen from the dead, so we can have hope in the resurrection as well. Anyway, thanks for joining us for Daily Bible Time today. Look forward to your company this time tomorrow, and we'll do it all again. <laughs>